In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this fuzzy sphere in Blender, and we'll be using particle systems to create this. And I'd also recommend using the Cycles rendering engine because it really doesn't look that good in Eevee, so I definitely recommend using Cycles for this tutorial. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the project files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, I'll have the links in the description. And if you'd like to help support the channel here on YouTube, then you can check out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on that join button, and if you'd like to send me a little tip, you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube, and I do appreciate all of your support. So here I am in a new scene in Blender, and I will have my screencast keys right down here in the corner so that you can see what buttons I'm pressing. And also I'd highly recommend using the Cycles rendering engine because it really doesn't look that good in Eevee. So I'm going to start by deleting everything, and we'll now go to the Add menu, and I'm going to add a UV sphere. And I'll zoom into the sphere, and I'm just going to shade it smooth. And then I'm also going to go into the rendered viewport mode so I can see how this is looking in the rendered view, and I'm going to set up a base world in the background so I'll go here to the world settings and I'll click here on the yellow dot next to color and I'm gonna choose sky texture and on the sky texture type here I'm gonna change it to this top one here the pre ham so change it to that one and then what I'm gonna do is click and drag this dot and I'm gonna drag it all the way so that the white part is at the very back just like that and then on the strength here I'm gonna turn this way down to a point one so it is not very strong that way we kind of have this little light blue part here and then it kind of gets dark as it comes up and that gives kind of some nice background lighting let's also go to the add menu and I'm gonna add a camera let's just add a regular camera and I can move my view to where I want the the camera to be and I'll hit Control alt numpad 0 to bring the camera to where I am and I can select the camera and move it around. I'm also going to go here to the output settings and on the resolution X and Y I'm going to turn these both to 2000. Then I'll hit G to grab and double tap the Z key to kind of move the camera in a little bit and just stick it right there. But I do want some space around the sphere so that the fuzz actually has space and the camera can see it all. Now there's also this blender grid here, but I don't really want the grid. So if I click right here on this drop down, I'm going to turn off the floor and turn off the X and Y so I can't see the grid. So now let's set up some lights. So I'll go to the add menu. Let's go here to light and I'll add an area light and I'll move this area light over and I'll rotate it over, rotate it on the Y axis and then kind of scale it up a little bit and pull it back here. And if I click here to go to the object data properties of the light, I'm going to make this color kind of a light blue color. And then also here on the power, I'm going to make this 1000. So it's really bright. Then I'm going to duplicate this light and I'm going to rotate it along the Y axis. Just rotate it like that. Maybe scale it down a little bit. And then for the color for this light, I'm going to make it a nice bright pink color. And I will turn the power of this light to 2000 so it's a bit brighter. Then I'll duplicate the light one more time and I'll kind of rotate it again on the Y axis. Let's also go up here to the top view and I'll rotate it over on the Z axis so it's slightly hot behind the sphere and I'll scale it up a bit. And then for this light, I'm going to set it to kind of like a pinkish reddish color. Just leave it there in the background and I'll leave the power at 2000. So now we have some really cool, interesting lighting, which will make the sphere look really cool. And then to make the colors and the lighting look a bit nicer, let's go here to the render properties and I'm going to scroll down and on the color management here, I'll use the view transform of AGX and I'll set the type here to a very high contrast to pop out the colors and make everything more saturated. So let's now select the sphere and we're going to click right here on this setting here to go to the part particle settings. Let's make this pretty big because I want to be able to see the particles better. So all the particle settings and I'll click on the plus here to add new particles. Let's also save our project. So I'll click on file and save and just save my project. So now you can see there's one little particle right there, and if I were hit to hit the space bar to play this, you can see particles are coming out. But instead of it being emitter particles, I want to change it to hair particles instead. So now you can see there are a bunch of hairs here coming out of the sphere. And let's also check mark the advanced button here so that there are more advanced settings. Now here on the number, you can change the number type, but for now I'm just going to leave it to a thousand. You can also change the seed here if you want to change the random seed to change the placement, but I'll just leave that at zero. And then we can also change this hair length here. Here. So I'm going to turn this down and make it much smaller. And I'll turn the hair length to a 0.8. So that's a pretty good size. Now if we scroll down here and open up the hair shape, you can see there is a diameter root and a tip. So if I turn up the diameter root, the very back of the hair is going to be thicker. Or if I turn up the tip, the tip is going to be really thick. You can also turn off the closed tip. And then if you turn up the tip here, you can see that that center part there is going to be really wide. But I don't want that. I'm going to keep the closed tip on. And for now, I'm going to leave the diameter root at 1 because I think that is a pretty good size. But you can change this if it's too 
too big or too small. Now let's close the hair shape and we're gonna open up the physics. And on the physics, there is this Brownian. So if I turn it up to like a 0.1, now you can see if I zoom over here, you can see that it's giving some waviness or randomness to the hairs. And if I continue to turn it up more and more, it's gonna be more and more random and wavy and kind of be really stringy and move around a lot. So I'm gonna turn this Brownian to a 0.2. That way it's just gonna be a little bit random. So I think a 0.2 is pretty good. Now I wanna add much more hairs. So of course we could right, go up here to the number and we could turn up this number to a really big number. But what I'm gonna do instead is use the children settings. So we'll close the emission and we'll close the physics. We're gonna open up the children here. And right now it's set to none. But if I turn it to simple, it's basically gonna add more hairs for every hair that there already is. So if I just open up the emission and turn down the number just to show you, if I turn this down really small, you can see there's one hair here. But then because I have the children turned to simple, it's basically adding a bunch of hairs here and you can see there's a display amount so like right now if I just turn it to like two now there's just gonna be like two hairs or one hair so if I turn it up more and more basically this display amount is how many more hairs it's displaying per one hair so because there's one hair here it's adding all these other hairs with it and so it's doing that for all the hairs now the render amount is how much it's actually gonna render so if I turn this up to like a hundred percent this is what it would actually render as now instead of doing that I want to change it to the interpolated instead and what the interpolated will do is it'll pretty much do the same thing, but it's going to add more of a random shape. So you can see there are more duplicated hairs, but they're at a quite random shape and the hairs aren't moving in the exact same location. So they're just more random. So I like the interpolated much better. Now on the display amount and the render amount, I'm going to turn these both to three. So there aren't actually that many more hairs, but there are just a few more hairs per hair that we have there on the top number. So now if we go back here to this top emission here, I can turn the number back up and I'll just turn it back up to a thousand for now. Now if I scroll back down here to the children settings, there's also this length here, so you can also change the length. So as well as changing the hair length right here, you can also change it with this length value, and this is pretty easy to control. You can really see what that's doing. So if you want to make the length smaller, make it more small fuzz or large fuzz, you can change that, but I'll just leave it how it is. And there's also a seed value if you want to change the seed for some reason. Now there's also a few more cool settings here. So like if you open up this roughness here, there's this uniform that you can change. So you can change that and that'll give you some different cool looking results for the hair. Now there's also this random value here so you can turn this up and this will act sort of like that brownian that we added but it's going to make it much more random so you can use that random value there. There's also this cool clumping setting so you can turn up the clump here and you can see some of the hairs are going to start to clump together so that is a pretty cool result as well and you can also change the shape here so if I turn the shape way up you can see the hairs are kind of coming out and then they're coming together at a point or if I turn the shape down they're going to be more overlapping each other. And then there's this cool kink setting so you can change the kink type so there's a curl one that is actually pretty cool how it kind of waves around a bit uh, there's also radial and there's wave and there's braid that's also a pretty cool one so the hairs are very random and there's also this spiral and there's a few different settings you can play around with with the kink type but I'll leave this back to nothing but that's definitely a setting you can play around with so to get some cool looking fur so let's go back up here to the top. And on this emission number, I'm gonna turn this up to a really high number of 7,000. Now, if this is too laggy for your scene, of course you don't have to turn it up that high. So what I'd recommend doing is maybe just turning it up by a small amount. And if you notice it's starting to get really laggy or crash blender, then don't turn it up that high, but I'll turn it up to 6,000, that's pretty good. So my final number is gonna be 7,000. And then as well as having the 7,000, we also have this interpolated, but this is set to a pretty small number of three. So let's now click right here to go to the render settings and I'm gonna open up the sampling here. And for my scene on the render samples, I'm gonna turn this up to 200. And then as well as that, I'm also gonna turn on this denoise here and then let's select the camera and we're just gonna move the camera out a little bit so we can see all the fur there. And of course you can play around with the lighting, get a cool result. You could change the colors of the light if you want to. So maybe go to the light settings and you can play around with the colors, but I've set it to some cool colors that I found work well, but you could also duplicate the lights and put some different colored lights and just kind of play around with where the lights are and get something that looks really cool. And then one final thing you could do to change the look of this is you could add a material to the sphere. So if I select the sphere, 
click here on the materials and add a new material. You could play around with the material. So if you change the color of the material, then that will change the color of the fur. So you could make it like a, a red color. That's pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. You could also turn up the metallic value and then also turn down the roughness. So now you have this really like metallic shiny fur and that gives a really cool result as well. But I'm just gonna delete this material. I'm just gonna go with a white material because I think that looks pretty good. So then I will save the project again and then I will click on render and render the image. And there is the finished render so now to save this you can click on image and just click on save as and save the final image so that'll be it for this tutorial so i hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching and if you'd like to help support me and this youtube channel then a great way to do that is by checking out my gumroad store and patreon page and on my gumroad store and patreon page you can get access to lots of blender content like 3d models and assets tutorial files the project files for this tutorial as well as geometry node modifier setups procedural materials and lots more blender content on my gumroad store and patreon page but i hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching